Yeah, our support from our crowd is just incredible, and we like to thank them from the bottom of our hearts. I mean, having games at home, it's a really, <laughs> it's a really good feeling to walk out onto the court and see that kind of crowd. <laughs> um, and for our seniors, just to be able to, you know, play one last game on their home court with that kind of crowd and. I don't know, just thank you to the crowd and whoever makes it possible to have these games. I know we had to put up a lot of money to bring TCU here. They're a great team, and they played a great game. But I'm just happy for our seniors that they got to experience one more game at home with a crowd that just loves us so much. How big was the three right before the, you know, with the TCU made? How much of, was that a momentum swing or how much of an effect did that have? Um, I mean, <laughs> I think running into the locker room, we're like, okay, you know, like we should probably play better defense on her. But I think we kind of let that one go and focused what we we're going to do when we came out of halftime. Um, as far as their momentum, I guess I never really looked back to see how they reacted to it. We just ran to the locker room, so. Uh, Allison, Jordan Moore seemed to be a matchup problem with you, you know for you throughout. Um, I mean, was that something that you expected that they were going to kind of try to do the things that they did with her? Um, yeah, I think going into the game, I mean, anytime you have a 6'3 girl, actually a couple of them, it's always hard when we hardly have anyone above six foot. It's always hard to match up, um, get rebounds, things like that. Uh, so yeah, we knew coming into the game that it was going to be a struggle. And I think we battled really well, but she's a great player. So we, there wasn't much more I don't think we could do. Um, honestly, I don't feel like we've looked too far ahead yet. We focused on today. Um, we were planning to go a little further than this, but obviously it came to an end. So I think um, we're going to have a little time off before we start postseason, then we'll focus a little more on that and hopefully prepare for next year. JC, um, were they playing you different than maybe than Michigan State? Because it, it seemed like fairly similar team. They had some quickness and, and some big kids could play a little bit. Uh, but did you see some similarities there or was this a different deal? Um, both those teams, TCU and Michigan State, are very big teams, very athletic, very long. And I mean, that's not something that we see necessarily as much throughout the entire Summit League. Um, yeah, they TCU did a great job of mixing up their zone and playing I don't know how many different zones in that second half just forcing us to um, just make reads on offense and switch up our offense almost every single possession but I mean like Allison said we were getting great shots they didn't just necessarily fall for us and um, yeah just a tough matchup inside for us but just all around that's a team effort and I don't know yeah, just long and athletic, both those teams, but very similar. Any final questions? How do you guys learn from this going into the offseason? Obviously, you're going to you know, take a little time to get over this, but you guys both returning next year. How do you learn from facing a Power 5 team? You guys beat a Power 5 team last year in the Big Ten team, and you lost to a Big 12 team. What do you guys learn from, from a game like this? Um, I think these games are great opportunities for us. Um, obviously, we know we can play with these teams. We can beat these teams. We beat a Big Ten team in Michigan State and played a TCU team who finished fifth in the Big 12 this year. They're a great team. Just hanging with those teams, I think that gives us a lot of confidence to know that they're that we're right there. We're just right on the edge, and you know we'll go back and we'll celebrate this year because it was is an awesome year. We went undefeated in the Summit League. That hasn't been done for 20 some years. Um, conference championship and another deep run into the WNIT. I think we're going to take time to look back on this year and celebrate and then get back in the gym and start preparing for next year. Well, first of all, I'd like to say I, I, we're just we're thankful again to have an opportunity to play at home. And Curry Seed helped us sponsor this game, and we're incredibly grateful and thankful to have an opportunity to play in front of our fans. And our fans were 
great tonight. They were phenomenal. They really did everything that they could to energize us and help us make one more shot and get one more rebound. And, you know, we unfortunately that didn't happen for us. But a lot that credit has to go to TCU. TCU is a team that finished fifth in the Big 12 but beat Texas uh, when Texas, I think, was seventh in the country and beat West Virginia when they were 15th in the country. They're a really, really good basketball team. What they've done in, in the WNIT so far has been exactly what they did tonight. Kind of stay with teams in the first half and then make some adjustments at halftime and um, find ways to get to the rim in the second half, and they certainly did that tonight against us. Um, and, and their zone really bothered us. We had, a, had an opportunity in the first quarter against their press. We struggled a little bit, then we figured it out. Then we had some success against their man, which is their base defense. Then they switched into a zone. We kept waiting for that time when threes were going to start falling for us because you get around the rim and you got shot blockers down there and long kids. Uh, we penetrated and kicked it, and there were some times we didn't get great looks because it was their, their length affected us. But there were other times that we got some really, really good shots, especially late in the shot clock that unfortunately just didn't fall for us. But what's hard for us now is saying goodbye to three really impressive seniors. We have Caitlin Duffy who, and you guys don't get to see this, but behind the scenes, this is a challenging situation. A kid has been out for two years, hasn't been able to play because of injuries, and has done everything and then some that you ask of a young lady to do and has been such an amazing example of servant leadership and, and does it with a smile on her face. If you wouldn't know better, you think that she's having the time of her life, which I think that she is, but she's also, this is a really challenging situation for a young lady who is so passionate about basketball to have to go through. So I think she's done a great job of, of helping out our program in any way that she can. She just, she does it all behind the scenes. She's cheering for her teammates, encouraging her teammates. She's the one we switch gym. She's dragging the rack of basketball. She's the shooter in our rebounding drill. She's the passer in our shooting drills. Um, just she's she's been a phenomenal young lady and has really made this program a lot better. And we're certainly grateful and thankful to her. Uh, Jasmine Tromboli, you know, really I remember last year when we, we talked about the possibility of her coming back from her, for her fifth year, not that she wouldn't get granted it, but from her standpoint of would her body be able to hold up? And what an example of being incredibly selfless and, and someone who during the course of this year, should she have started, could she have started? She could have started in every single game. She certainly was talented enough and, and, and had, had just an incredible senior year. Um, but it was someone who understood that we needed a spark off the bench, and she gave that to us all year long and did it with a smile on her face and got out of her comfort zone and became a very vocal leader for us and is a great example. Because that's not she's a very vocal kid <laughs> and it's fun to listen to, but not necessarily on the basketball court. It wasn't something that she really did last year and something that she's really grown and matured and, again, has, has just shown, I think, her teammates how, how important it is to be completely selfless. And Kate Liveringhouse, uh, what, a, what an impressive career this young lady has had. You know, has played in more games than any, any basketball player here at the University of South Dakota, women's basketball in the Division I era. Um, she's changed her game, has really grown her game from a kid that was strictly a back-to-basket kid to a, to a young lady who we counted on an awful lot this year to hit open arc shots, did a tremendous job, was a great leader behind the scenes for our team in terms of making sure that everyone was held accountable in, in the right way and, and making sure that she was kind of pulling us, pulling us or pushing us and doing whatever it takes. It leaves the University of South Dakota as a, as a three-time conference champion. That's, that's an impressive, impressive career that she's had. So, you know, I know we did not really talking about the game a whole lot. I just, it's hard to say goodbye to those three young ladies because what they've done is nothing short of, uh, I think, just impressive. So if you want to ask questions about the game, I should probably get to that now. Uh, Jordan Moore is unbelievable. And, and there were times that they threw the basketball to her and she wasn't open. And we'd have two or three players on her, and she'd come up with it and then get a good shot off and usually make it. Or if she missed it, get an offensive rebound and then make it or then get fouled. So she just she was a, a more than a handful for us. She was some a player that we just unfortunately couldn't compete with tonight, not from a lack of effort, just from a lack of physical size and ability to, to make some plays. And if you're going to combat that, you have to hit open shots. Well, 
Well, the, their length is really challenging. You know, you play against a lot of zones that have five, eight, five, nine, five, ten kids. Well, theirs is maybe one, five, eight kids on the floor, and then they've got six, one, six, one, six, two. It, it's just so long, and it's it's challenging. And they play angles and do a good job making life difficult for you. So I just, in, unfortunately, in that kind of situation, you're relegated to either go inside against a shot blocker and make something happen, um, or hit open shots. And I, I thought it stretches. We got some really good looks, and we've been a team that's made a lot of shots this year, and it. You know, whether it's because of the physicality of the game or it just didn't happen. It just didn't go in. And so then what do you try to do? You try to get offensive rebounds, and we were able to get 12 of them, but we weren't able to necessarily capitalize on those. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it's – it did, did – uh, part of the game today – was part of our our ability to make plays impacted by the fact that we were still probably worn down from beating up, getting beat up by Michigan State. It could very well be the case. You know, our players on on Friday, Friday we went watched film and we moved around a little bit on the court just so that we could recover and get 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 our bodies moving again. But and our, our players were more sore after that game than they've been after any game this whole year. So there's a there's a definitely an, an impact of playing that level of competition. And the physical aspect, again, I thought our players battled. I thought they tried to do everything that they could. I'm incredibly proud of their effort. But you're right, we, we competed. I thought our kids did a really nice job of continuing to make adjustments and unfortunately weren't good enough to beat a really good team. TCU is, is obviously talented, athletic, but they've also gone on the road and they, they won in the pit in New Mexico, which is not an easy thing to do. And I'm sorry, I don't think it's very easy to win here. I think our fans make this a really, really challenging place to come in and play. At one point in time, we were trying to tell a player right in front of our bench how an adjustment we were going to make on a ball screen, and we're yelling to try to get her attention and tell her and making hand signals and, and she couldn't hear us. And she's standing right in front of us. So I just think it's this this place is a pretty challenging place for opponents to come into and TCU came in here and and really handled themselves with a lot of composure and played really well and I think are going to be a, certainly a tough matchup for anyone going down the stretch. It's tough to already start looking forward to the three seniors that you already touched on but you do work well with talent back. Yeah, we do. Uh, How eager, I mean, already to get started, you know, I know you're going to let this sink in a little bit but you got to be pretty excited. Yeah, it, it, it is. I think what's really exciting for for us and for our program is the growth that our players have made from last year to this year in terms of individually, but also in terms of understanding, you know, and, and getting better. We've got we got so much better defensively this year, and we talk a lot about that. But we also got an, a lot better offensively this year, and it was it was a challenge because we couldn't necessarily go inside and attack as much as maybe we could when we had Abby Fogg, but it also made us a little bit tougher to guard too in different ways. So with that, I think all of our players have progressed and developed, and we're certainly excited, certainly excited for our future. And I think our players probably need a little bit of time off at this point in time, but they're, they're hungry. They're great kids. They just they have incredible chemistry. And you know, so I, I really do believe that, that our kids are going to continue to make progress and, and develop. Coach, you just talked about how, how your team has developed well, I thought this this group came in and were probably challenged in terms of we graduated two seniors who started every game last year. Um, we were trying to figure out how to put our new pieces together from you know our Jasmine returning and potentially Caitlin Duffy returning, and then well, how do we? how do we find a way to get stops? We're a really small team. How do we become a better defensive team, even though we're a, a smaller team than we were last year? And, and I think what this group has has really demonstrated, and it's been great to see, is how how valuable it is to be completely selfless. And I think that this group has done that and is certainly something that we as coaches are extremely, extremely proud of them for that. We're thankful for that. We're elated to be a part of that and we just we we're, we have great kids we have phenomenal young ladies that are fun to be with every day 
And that's probably the hardest part with the seniors. Well, we'll have a chance to get back with our young kids and we'll start working out whenever that time is. And that'll be a great situation. We love being in practice with them, working out with them, but it's going to be hard to not have those three there. It's just going to be so strange and so different. And so that that's going to be the challenge. But I think the selflessness and the, the camaraderie, this group has a lot of character to them and 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 really a lot of energy to them and a lot of enthusiasm about them and that's not something that automatically returns it's not something that that has to be recreated and so the group coming back is really gonna have to work on that